There have been several requests for me to create a tutorial on promises. I plan to do some tutorials on promises, but first I want to cover some initial information that I feel is important. So in this tutorial, I would like to talk about asynchronous coding. This is an important concept to understand in JavaScript and relates heavily to promises. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. So to begin this discussion on asynchronous coding, let's start by looking at some code and explain single threaded environments. So here I have some code. Two functions, a couple of console log statements in the first function with an alert. And then we have a second function with a console log statement. And the first function is called, the second function is called. So in a single threaded environment, only one piece of code can be running at a time. So we move through this code synchronously. So test is called, we execute that, we come to the alert, we have to stop because it's waiting for a response. Then it goes to this line of code. And then finally, it's able to execute this function. So synchronous program execution is somewhat similar to this code. Your program is executed line by line, one line at a time. Each time a function is called, program execution has to wait until the function returns before continuing to the next line of code which in this case happens to be another function call. So as you can probably guess we're not going to get this third console log statement until this first function has completed. So let's just take a look at that. So if I open the console first before I refresh this page, now I refresh it you can see we get the alert. We only have the first console log statement. Once I press OK on the alert, the second console log statement in that first function prints, and then I the second function will run and it will print a console log statement. So synchronous pro program execution. And as you can imagine, this method of execution can have undesirable ramifications. For example, let's say that a function is called to start a very time-consuming process. And what if you want to stop that lengthy process or you need to do something else? With synchronous execution, your program is stuck, waiting for the process to end, and there's no way out. Asynchronous execution avoids this bottleneck. You are essentially saying, well, I know this function is going to take a while to execute. It's going to take a lot of time, but I don't want to wait around while it executes. So I want to be able to continue with some other code while that is executing. So that is asynchronous code execution. So let's look at how we would do that, how we would change this code to asynchronous execution. And we would do that using callbacks. We're going to use a callback example to resolve this. Now, if you are not familiar with callbacks, I highly recommend referring to the tutorial that I have listed in the description of this tutorial and get familiar with callbacks. You need to understand that concept as well as we move towards these other concepts and understanding promises. So here we're going to set up a callback and I'm going to use set timeout to do that. Set timeout is a function in JavaScript that allows me to execute some code after a certain amount of time. That's its purpose. The way it does that is by invoking a callback function after a certain amount of time. So I'm going to set up that callback function like this. There we go. That is the callback function right here. It's an anonymous function that will be called when a certain amount of time expires. How much time? We're going to start with five seconds. That's expressed in milliseconds. So once five seconds has expired, this code will execute. 
Now notice what's going to happen. This is now asynchronous. Now we don't need to wait on this code to finish before this code executes. So let me just save this and we'll take a look. So I refresh that. Notice we get, now I get the attention. That line already starts. Once five seconds is up, now we get the first console log statement and then we get the alert. I click OK and then we get the second one. So the second function was able to execute. This was able to execute even though we started with this function because we're using asynchronous code execution as opposed to synchronous. Asynchronous code execution is used throughout JavaScript. So it is important to understand when you're using JavaScript. Now, something about this, we could reduce this to a very short amount of time, 10 milliseconds. So short that when we refresh this, we see the alert show up and the start of the code, but notice that this other function is already invoked and already executed. So it seems like it's happening at the same time, but it is asynchronous. So callbacks work great for making your code asynchronous and avoiding that problem. And I recommend, as mentioned, you learn about callbacks. And if you haven't already done so, refer to the tutorial in the description. Callbacks are used extensively in JavaScript. Now, we have seen what callbacks can achieve but callbacks do have issues. And I'm going to talk about those problems in the next tutorial. Now, these tutorials I'll be adding together in a playlist so those of you that come to this at a later date can view them together. Now, to make sure you're notified about the next tutorial, subscribe to the channel. Now, before we're done here, please hit the like button. It can help others find this tutorial. Also hit the bell button to be notified about new tutorials. And as I mentioned, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button or click the circle link on the left, the one with my face. I release a new tutorial each week. You can click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away to continue learning or click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com for full courses and a complete list of tutorials. Thanks for watching.